March, my March TBR, the books I want to read in March. And the elephant in the room, of course, is March of the Mammoths. Mammoth is a big book, over 800 pages. My name is Jim. This is my channel, Books, Reading and Stuff. This March, for March of the Mammoths, I have this book. Cryptonomicon by Neil Stevenson. This weighs in at 910 pages. You might have seen it before on my channel because I had it last March for March of the Mammoths. I'm not rereading it. I'm trying again. Last March I DNF'd this. It was too much. But I'll give it another go. I have two Mammoths on my March TBR. The second one is this one, The Eighth Life by Nino. Shavili. I've talked about this before on my channel. The biggest book on my shelf is this. This is The Eighth Life by Nino Haratashvili. This is the Georgian version. This is 1,195 pages long. The Kindle version in English is 1,258 pages long. You know, Haritashvili is Georgian. There's the Georgian flag. I live in Georgia. This book was nominated for the Booker Prize, the International Booker Prize in 2020. It was on the long list and it takes us through the 20th century in Georgia with a family of chocolatiers. Now we've dealt with the elephant in the room, the March of the Mammoths. The March has other Readathon's going on. There's the Irish Readathon. And for that, I have this The Marble Collector by Cecilia Ahern. Uh, I read Thanks for the Memories by Cecilia Ahern, which was the last book my mother ever gave me. It was an interesting book. It was about how somebody has a blood transfusion and then gets some memories they didn't have before. This, The Marble Collector, I liked the idea of the title. Uh, I'm not a marble collector, but I do collect things, particularly little cars. I have over a thousand of these. There's a fine line between collecting and hoarding. Uh, also with Margaret Atwood, my favourite book of hers was Cat's Eye. Cat's Eye is a type of marble. Uh, I can see the attraction of collecting marbles, but I think I'll oh, refrain. And I'm looking forward to reading this. Cecilia O'Hearn is an Irish writer. Fourth on my TBR is this book. I won't say the title because I don't want to get into trouble with YouTube. And it's about um, the feminist guide to taking back the English language. It looks at gender in our language. I like books about language because I teach English. I like this book, Lingo by Gaston Duran. And this is the only book of Bill Bryson's that I really like, Mother Tongue, looking at the way we speak, what we say. Uh, this book, again, I'm not saying the title, by Amanda Montel, I can say her name, has some very interesting things about how our language is gender biased. Uh, things like the words sir and madam. 300 years ago, both were used as formal terms of address. But with time, madam evolved into a mean, conceited, precocious girl. Then a kept mistress or a prostitute, and finally a woman who manages a brothel. All the while, sir hasn't changed its meaning. And a similar thing can be seen with master and mistress. Master is generally neutral. Mistress has a lot of pejorative meaning now. It's a fascinating look at our language and how it's influenced by the people who create the language, who, who govern the language. And it's like a lot of things, it tends to be the old white men that do this. And it makes for interesting reading. 
Next three books are from my February TBR. I went rather off piste on my February TBR. I read other books other than the ones I'd intended to read. First, I have No Way Back by A.J. Little. This is a hard boiled detective thriller in Tbilisi. I read his first book, No Harm Done, which I really enjoyed. And he has this detective, Ramaz Donadze, who's looking into the crimes. It's interesting to have a detective story based here in this city, Tbilisi. Also from February's TBR is White Smith by Zadie Smith. This was her debut novel. She's a Bangladeshi English writer. I've heard good things about this. I'm looking forward to reading this. And Sarah Pretsky is a writer I don't need any introduction to. Uh, she writes about this P.I. in Chicago, V.I. Wachowski. This is the 14th book about V.I. Wachowski. You don't have to read them in any particular order. I read six of the first seven, and I've also read the most recent ones, the 20th and 21st. And now this is going back to the 14th because I found this secondhand in a local English bookshop, Prospero's. So I'm sure I will enjoy this. And continue my ongoing project to read one book in Georgian this year. This is Me Bebia Ilikota Ilarioni, uh, Granny Iliko Ilarion and Me by Nodo Dumbadze. And I've so far read 11 pages, most of which were using Google Translate to translate almost every word in every sentence, but I'm getting there. And I'm enjoying the story of this guy, me, is Zuriko, who's a bit of a loser. He doesn't do well in school. It's set in the early 1940s in Guria, in the west of Georgia. And it's very amusing. These are his friends, Ilarian and Iliko, who get up to some great capers. And here's his despairing grandmother about all the trouble he gets into. But I hope to have read some more by the end of March. And finally, a fourth book with a Georgian connection, A Man Was Going Down the Road by Otto Chaladze. Otto Chaladze is one of the most famous Georgian writers. Uh, this was recommended to me by Roz, a scally dandling about the books. Uh, I haven't read anything by Otto Chaladze. I understand he's a bit surreal, but... Twice a week, I walk down his street here in Tbilisi. There's an Otto Chaladze street, so it'll be interesting to see what the writer who the street is named after is like. Let me know in the comments what you are reading in March, or what you intend to read in March, and particularly what your mammoth will be in March. What mammoth have you chosen? Or mammoths, even? If you enjoyed this video you can like it below this will help me with the youtube algorithm and i look forward to seeing you on the next video goodbye